Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to To Be Determined. Today we're going to be going over how to get all of the brand new stuff with the garden, including the brand new secret talisman, a bunch of the new farming armor sets, including Fermento armor, which is the best one in the game. We'll also talk about how some of the armor sets were changed to have farming fortune that didn't used to. Anyways, let's jump into it. All right, so for our first couple armor sets, we're gonna talk about they're in Wheat Collection. Farm Suit, which is like basically the first armor set that a lot of players get. It has five farming fortune per armor piece now, so it's actually a decent starter set. Once you get to 25,000 Wheat Collection though, there is the Farm Armor, which is a little bit more pricey with Enchanted Hay Bales, but still really not that bad compared to the regular Hay Bales for Farm Suit Armor. It is a lot cheaper to do the farm suit, but I mean, enchanted hay bales, not that difficult to get, especially with the garden out now. Other than that, there is also the farmer slash rancher boots right here. These give farming fortune based on your farming level. So you gain one farming fortune for every farming skill level. So these are actually pretty nice to have, especially the rancher's boots because you can manually change what your speed is. So this one is definitely recommended, even if you get fermento armor. A lot of people still use this just because it's such a QOL item and it really doesn't cut back on your farming fortune by that much. But also in Pumpkin Collection at level 7, there's the Lantern Helmet, which also gives one farming fortune, but it only does that per farming level when you're holding an axe. So it's actually pretty good for melons and for pumpkins as well, and for cocoa beans too, of course. But we can't talk about farming armor without going to Melon Collection. The Melon Armor is the base armor for the Fermento Armor set, so there are actually four levels of this armor set it starts off with melons you need 120 total enchanted melon blocks to make this entire armor set but then you can upgrade the armor using crop which you get from the melon armor if you use the melon armor while farming wheat carrots or potatoes there's a chance that you get crappies but this tiered bonus only activates if you have at least two of the pieces on so seeing as i only have one piece right now i've farmed a ton of wheat carrots potatoes and i haven't dropped a single piece which i know the odds are really low but you can see that the tiered bonus there is gray. So if you have multiple pieces that should turn orange or a different color, and that will actually activate your odds of dropping the item. But you can see the item for melon armor is crappies. So these are crappies, really cheap on the bazaar right now. So honestly, you could probably just buy all the ones you need. But you can see you use crappies with tightly tied hay builds and boxes of seeds to upgrade your melon armor to crappie armor. And here's all the different recipes. You need a couple different things for each different armor piece but you're gonna need 80 total crappies to upgrade your melon armor to the crappie armor and then you're gonna need squashes to upgrade your crappie armor so the crappie armor also has a tiered bonus that activates when you have two or more pieces on from farming pumpkins melons and cocoa beans you have a chance to drop a squash now again these armor pieces do have farming skill requirement so melon armor is 25 crappie armor is 30 once you get up to squash armor which also requires 80 squash to upgrade from crappie to squash you're gonna need farming 35 and i'm guessing with fermentos let's take a look as you can see right here you're gonna need two condensed fermentos for each armor piece but it does require farming skill level 40 and a lot of materials but basically 18 regular fermentos to make the two condensed fermentos so you'll need 72 total fermentos to make the fermento armor but it is the best armor in the game so i would say it's worth it now before we talk about how to get the new talisman i do want to talk about the brand new things that they added to anita's shop over here by jacob they did add a hoe of greatest tilling which is even better than the hoe of greater tilling it does cost twice as much but it tills an entire row of farmland. So instead of running through your farm and just hoeing the ground, you can just run sideways and till each area of the ground and have your basket of seeds in your other slot. So you can have your hoe in this slot, your basket of seeds in this slot, just go all the way down tilling the ground and then go back tilling or replanting the ground with the seed. So this makes farm building so much easier. And they also did change the way Prisma pumps work. So it'll pump the water in the direction you're facing instead of you just placing it in the middle and it pumping it both directions. So you can do it all from one end of your garden. So if you want to rework one area of your garden, all you gotta do is mine out this entire row here or even this row here. Let's say I wanted to rework my potato area. I would go ahead and 
get rid of everything on this row right here make sure it was all replaced with dirt and then i could just go down and retill everything here and then replant it on the way back as well as throwing in the prisma pumps for the water rows if i needed them but let's say you needed slabs for a pumpkin farm or something they did add in the builder's ruler to the sky mart so now you only need 20 copper instead of having to save up a ton of bits for a builder's wand. Plus, this is honestly better than a builder's wand, in my opinion. It's much easier to use, much cheaper, and it's got the ability to collect all blocks in a line, which the builder's wand does not have. So that's pretty nice. Also, as far from the Sky Mart, the items that you're going to want, of course, the Lotus equipment is the best farming equipment in the game right now. And having the scythes to clear out different areas of your farm whenever you're making a new plot is really nice. Or if you're just getting into farming, the gardening tools here are really good too. But none of that is why you're here. You're here to learn how to get the brand new talisman. I bet. I don't really know but let's talk about it. So we all know the visitor system, or if you don't, I'll be making a video on it pretty soon. But basically, these guys will line up a maximum of five of them, and you walk up to them, ask what they want. If you have it, you can give it to them, and they will give you farming XP, garden experience, and copper in return, as well as sometimes some extra item, depending on which NPC it is. Sometimes they'll give you some extra stuff, but the best NPC that you're gonna want, especially for this talisman, this NPC is only for the talisman, it is Beth. So if you haven't unlocked Beth yet in your visitor's logbook, you basically have to go talk to her. She is at the desert. So if you warp over to the mushroom desert, she's literally in one of these houses right here. This one right here, hi, this is Beth. So you basically just go talk to her once you're at a high enough gardening level and she will be able to visit you on your island. So once she comes visit to you, that doesn't mean that you can get the talisman right away. She actually has to come to visit you three different times. And I think she has different dialogue each time. So the first time she says, I think I'm really onto something here. A, Jake says he can't walk, but I've seen him walk yesterday. And B, he asks strangers to get him some animals, but these animals are nowhere to be found. So after she visits you three times and you complete her third offer, she will ask you to go to the mushroom desert and to these coordinates, 175, 44, negative 470 which is, I believe, this block right here. There should be another block above this. Basically, you'll come over here, click on this block. We are in the glowing mushroom cave, by the way. Click right here on this block. And then they'll ask you to go back to the coordinates once you get her on your garden again. So you have to wait till the fourth time that she's on your garden. I should ask you to come back here again, and then Jake will be here. So she and Jake are going to have a whole conversation, and basically after they're done, you'll receive Jake's plushie, which grants two health and increases the amount of pelts you get when hunting animals by one. So if you haven't done your pelt hunting yet, I do recommend waiting until you get this plushie and a Finnegan's around because it will go by super duper fast. But that is how you unlock the Jake's plushie and all of the brand new farming items. But that's not all Beth does, by the way. She is actually a Chad. She gives me almost a thousand copper for a tightly tied hay bale, which is granted four million coins right now. But still, a thousand copper is pretty nice. So I'm definitely going to take her up on that. But again, you can't just let her visit your island. You have to actually accept the offer that she does three times, then do the first part, and then the last time and you'll get the plushie. Anyways, that's all for today, boys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, remember to leave a like and sub if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. God bless.